I enjoy this drink. Another! Just <laughs> making sure I actually didn't break the glass. I, I, I couldn't afford to break this mug. <laughs> That's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Thor in my kind of really quick recap of all the Marvel movies. I actually really love this movie. I enjoy this movie immensely, even though there are some clearly obvious flaws of this film. This is probably one of my favorite Marvel films just for how it feels, just for the story that is portrayed, the humility of the characters, and the fact that it's goddamn Shakespeare, except with comic book heroes, basically. The film was directed by Kenneth Branagh, who, if if you don't know, the dude's done probably the most amount of Shakespeare to movie adaptation out of anyone. And he clearly displays all those inspirations and tactics that he used in those films in this film. It is just grandiose. How the characters talk with each other, how they communicate, how the sense of loyalty and honor and all of these grandiose sort of medieval hero sort of ideals are jam-packed into this film. When we see Thor listing off those four guys who only mattered really for this movie and then were just killed off in three, the dialogue that you're hearing them say, it's like King Arthur in King Arthur's Court. Chris Hemsworth is a fantastic choice as Thor. Obviously, Tom Hiddleston was a great choice as Loki. And what we see in this film is the catalyst of their camaraderie, the rivalry, their hatred, and their love for each other. I feel that this film is one of the better films for introducing the characters. Obviously, Tony Stark was a totally brand new field. No one had really done Iron Man before, but Thor is based on other film characters of medieval lore. King Arthur, several Shakespearean characters. When he's banished to Earth, this is probably one of my favorite parts of the film, is that he's not just a bitter, whiny little brat. He immediately is learning from his lesson. He realizes that this is a challenge and this is a punishment for what he's done. He doesn't take it like a little child, he takes it like a developing character. One of my favorite scenes in the film is when Loki lies to him and tells him that father is dead, mother wants you to stay here. And what does he say? The last thing he says to him is, thank you for coming here. Thank you for telling me this. And then Loki, who, even though he's getting exactly what he wants, is hurt. And he's humiliated by his brother's just undying love for him and the fact that he's taking advantage of it. And through the film, we see Thor really become a character. We see him go through humility, go through challenges. There are some obvious issues in this film. The action is not exactly the best. A lot of goddamn Dutch angles for some reason. Kenneth Branding was like, we'll make this really artistic Dutch angle, Dutch angle, Dutch angle. And it just seems to be the constant throughout the entire film. Obviously, Natalie Portman's character, this is the most important she ever is. And of her two movies, and she's not really even that important in this movie. Her character, as much as they try to push her, she's very off to the wayside. She's there because she's a girl, and they have to have a girl to like in these movies. And admittedly, the town that they hang out in is very plain. You can tell it's clearly a made town. It was. It was actually a street, and all these buildings were made purely for this movie. However, Asgard is very aesthetically pleasing. So much so that they basically kept the same art style throughout the next two movies of Thor. The fight on the Rainbow Bridge is one of the best scenes in the film, seeing these two brothers fight each other, knowing that they really want to really just appease their father, and that's the whole goal. It's got this Lion King Macbeth sort of feel of both of them just trying to please their father, to make them happy, to prove to one another that they are the best, that they are loyal to their father. And really, Odin is just, he's the worst father. This guy just causes shit. However, there is one element I've forgotten about in this review. It's your boy, Hawkeye. Yeah, you thought I was going to forget about this guy? Uh-uh. Hawkeye's the number one. He's the one who's going to take down Thanos. Everyone thinks that this dude isn't cool. But you know what? Hawkeye's the number one man. He's going to be the one who takes down Thanos, and y'all y'all know it. One other thing, though. When he's fighting the giant guard thing, the giant metal walking thing, he, unlike Thanos, does go for the head there. I can't blame him for not wanting to put in that line, though. That was a pretty damn badass line if you know what I mean. So yes, there are some complaints about this film, whether it's being from its odd overuse of Dutch angles, it's kind of lacking human element on Earth, 
are the absolute grandiose over the topness of the Shakespearean medieval hero sort of lore of the film. But really, in my opinion, that's what makes this film so enjoyable. It's one of my favorite films in this series for a reason. And every time I watch it, I'm always like, you know what? I don't think this film's aged that well. And uh, to be honest, it hasn't. Visually, it has not aged that well. A ton of aesthetic, it hasn't. But that feeling of just great adventure of camaraderie in this Shakespeare stuff. Of course this film doesn't really stand up to Thor 3 because it was a different movie. It really embraced Chris Hemsworth as being a funny guy. It also didn't give him those weird blonde eyebrows. That was, this was the only movie that kept it. It was really weird. But otherwise, I still very much enjoy Thor, and it is one of my personal favorites of the entire franchise. I'm going to give Thor a 5 out of 7. Anyways, guys, I hope you liked this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribing. Anyways, Incredible Hulk will be next, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching the video. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie. Movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. You know, Nitz, you can't get more money unless you offer questionable favors. Yeah, guy. Unless, of course, those favors involve the ladies, guy. By support, I mean getting the word out, guys. Oh, well, couldn't you find a better means than this guy? All he seems to talk about is supernatural or hold a coffee mug real awkward. Why didn't you ask a Kardashian or something? Yeah, guy. Get in with the ladies, guy. Hey, he's trying to help out. Like you've been trying with Kimmy Burton? I've seen Jabba the Hutt finish a marathon faster. Yeah, guy. You're a massive slug thing, guy. <sighs> to see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.